Welcome to this UCL video that demonstrates how to assess the critically unwell patient using the Dr. A, B, C, D, E approach. We will be using a scenario to illustrate the assessment and will pause at key points to give further guidance. By the end of this video, you should be able to 1. Follow a structured way of assessing a critically unwell patient. 2. Recognise the signs and symptoms of a peri-arrest situation. 3. Call for appropriate help in a timely manner. And 4. Initiate appropriate interventions. Mr Sergio Gomez, a 53-year-old man, has been admitted to the surgical ward following a hemicolectomy. He is four hours post-surgery. The doctor has been called to see him as he is in lots of pain and the nurses are concerned. As with all examinations and consultations, we begin with wiper. W. Wash hands. I. Introduce yourself. P. Ask for permission. E. Expose. And R. Reposition. First, check for danger. Danger can be present in different ways, including environmental, such as wires, equipment, wet floors and relatives, situational, body fluids and matter, including blood, vomit, urine and faeces, the patient, could they be in danger to themselves or others as they may be confused or aggressive. Remember universal precautions, such as gloves and aprons, may be necessary. Hello there, sir. I'm Tina. I'm one of the junior doctors here. I understand you've been feeling unwell. Yes. Can you tell me what's been going on, please? Yeah, I, I've got um, pains in my tummy. Tina, the junior doctor, has checked for danger and moves the catheter out of harm's way. Whilst introducing herself to the patient and asking an open question, Tina has checked that the patient is responsive. And I feel very uh, sick. Shall I hop forward? I'll get you up on the pole. There we go. There we go. Has this been happening a lot? Yes. It has, and um, have you had any antibiotics yet? No. Nobody's given you any. Okay, that's something I'm going to look into um, giving you to help to help you with this sickness. Okay. Um, is that vomiting episode yeah. gone for a bit? No. Thank you very much. Okay. If you don't mind, I'm just going to do a full assessment because I noticed that you've got some bleeding that's come through the blanket. And yeah, I just need to make sure that everything else is okay, okay. before we go back to giving you your anti-sickness that I've said um, we'll give you. Okay. After observing the patient, Tina acknowledges that a full assessment needs to commence. Okay, so just popping my apron on and a new set of gloves. <clears throat> I'm just going to start by then just having a look. So once I'm doing this assessment, you'll find there'll be a lot of looking at you, and I am actually doing something, I promise. Okay. And would you open your mouth for me, please? Thank you. Do you feel there's anything there from that vomit? No. Wonderful. Thank you very much. To check airway, use a look, feel, listen approach. In this instance, Tina is looking for any obstructions in the mouth following the vomiting episode. Sergio's airway is patent. Please refer to the airway video for how to assess an obstructed or compromised airway. Now we move on to breathing and continue with the look, feel, listen approach commencing with observation of the face, then neck, and finally, the rest of the body. This is the look section. Look at the face for signs of hypoxia, such as cyanosis, nasal flaring, pursed lip breathing. Look at the neck. Is the trachea central? Is he using his accessory muscles? 
exposed the chest and observed chest for respiratory rate, the depth of chest expansion and symmetry. Also, remember to look for scars, wounds or any abnormalities. This is the feel section. Feel the trachea to check its position. Feel the chest for depth of expansion and symmetry and percuss if needed. One more. That's perfect. Thank you very much. I'm just going to get my stethoscope so I can have a listen. This is the listen section. Using your stethoscope, listen for breath sounds over the apices, mid-zones at the front and bases at the back. Common abnormal breath sounds include wheeze, crackles and bronchial breathing. After listening to the bases at the back, check for sacral edema. In addition to look, feel and listen, we must now measure and treat. This is the measure section. These are the respiratory rate and oxygen saturations. You may also have to consider taking an arterial blood gas, a chest x-ray, a sputum sample and a peak expiratory flow rate. An ABG is indicated here. Finally, the treat section. You can see here that Mr Gomez has oxygen saturations of 93%. According to the British Thoracic Society guidelines, he should be treated with oxygen. Please refer to the British Thoracic Society guidelines for correct oxygen delivery for varying conditions. Looking at the news criteria, his observations do not trigger senior help. However, we are still worried because the patient has vomited and requires several interventions for which we will need assistance. Now we move on to circulation. Just having a look at your general, general colour at the moment. This is the look section. Look at the patient's face for colour, pallor, sweating. Look at the patient's neck for JVP. Look at the patient's body for any bleeding. Expose the wound, but you've got so you've got you're a little bit hairy there, so it might be feel, feel a bit painful as I lift it up. Uh -huh. okay. It is apparent that Sergio has some bleeding from his wound. Look at the patient's body for any edema. This is the feel section. Feel for clamminess and temperature and feel the peripheries. Feel for the pulse. When feeling for the pulse, consider the rate, rhythm, volume and character. Feel for capillary refill time. To perform capillary refill, ensure the patient's fingers are at or above the level of the heart. Press for five seconds. This should blanch the skin. Stop or let go after five seconds and see how long it takes for the colour to return to the area. The normal time is less than two seconds. If it is not possible to use the fingers, a central one done on the chest is acceptable. Feel for peripheral temperature and edema. 
finally feel his abdomen for any distension. This is the listening section. Listen for heart sounds. The aortic valve, the pulmonary valve, the tricuspid valve, and the mitral valve. This is the measurement section. The measurements for circulation are blood pressure, heart rate, temperature, urine output. A normal urine output measurement is equivalent to half a mil per kilo per hour. This is the treat section. Sergio's measurements trigger the need to call appropriate help according to the new score. Can I have some help, please? Hi, Charles. Hi, Charles. Would you mind popping another cannula, please, in his ACF? Insert two wide bore cannula, one in each anticubital fossa. Use one cannula to deliver fluids and medications and the other to take blood samples. Think about any other interventions, such as pain relief and antibiotics. Paracetamol and an antiemetic are indicated in this case. When taking bloods, Standard ones are FBC and use an ease. Further bloods are dependent on the patient's condition and symptoms. In this case, a group and save plus a cross match may be indicated. A fluid challenge of 500 ml of a crystalloid such as normal saline is appropriate. This is given over 15 minutes and is indicated in Sergio's case. You may also consider doing an ECG. In certain cases, the fluid can be sped up and given as a stat fluid bolus, whilst in other situations, it may not be indicated at all. This may be patients with heart failure and pulmonary edema. Discussing with or summoning senior help at this point will help decision making for appropriate fluid resuscitation. Now that we have finished with circulation, we move on to disability. How's that anti-sickness doing? I'm feeling much better. Oh, fantastic. Oh, good. At least it's working. We are checking for any disturbance to the patient's brain. Understanding the mechanism of injury can be important. Once again, an open question will determine where your patient fits. We begin our assessment using the AVPU scale. A. Is the patient alert? V. Is the patient responding to voice? P. Is the patient responding to pain? U. Is the patient unresponsive? Sergio scores A on the AVPU scale as he is alert. A score of P or U is very worrying and calling for help immediately is necessary. A blood sugar test is always indicated. If you are concerned with any of AVPU, you might need to progress to the Glasgow Coma Scale. The top to toe look helps you identify any clues that will help with your diagnosis. It helps you focus on your initial worry, in Sergio's case, his abdomen. Other signs that may be present include swelling, scars, rashes, and edema. Finally, refer to the patient's charts, updating information and familiarising yourself with the patient's notes. This information will assist in your handover to your seniors and speciality doctors. Hello, I'm Catherine the Surgical Reg, you called. Sergio's care is now being handed over to the surgical team. Do remember to hand over to the appropriate team, ensuring your own team is aware of the situation. A tool such as SBAR will be used during these handovers. Well done, you have now completed your Dr ABCDE assessment. You have administered oxygen to the patient for his low oxygen levels, 
started IV fluids for the low blood pressure, taken bloods, administered paracetamol for pain and given an antiemetic for nausea. Now you must reassess the patient regularly until you are satisfied they are improving. Music